hey welcome back to the channel well today we're going to do a barn scene i've kind of got it sketched out here there ain't much just that's it just the barn i don't have anything else sketched out and if you're ready to get started let's go all right let's go ahead and get started i'm going to start on our sky it's actually a pretty big sky but it's very plain i mean there's not a lot of action going on in it matter of fact i actually got a picture that i'm looking at here there's really no clouds in it very faint it's got a little pink in it which is what i'm putting on right now very faint sky and that's okay if that's what the picture shows that's what we'll do and i've seen this picture of this barn and i thought wow that's a pretty nice looking barn you know, it's got to have some pretty good composition in it and I, I feel like it does but here's I made some pink right here here's my palette it's a mess this is my I worked on one painting earlier and I finished I did a mountain painting a while ago completely finished it and so this will be my uh, third one maybe two and a half because the first one was almost one the first one I started on day was almost done it's got some pink in the sky quite a bit of pink but it's very pale very pale indeed hope everybody's doing good today so far so good on this end that's all you can hope for ain't it so far so good My bristles are coming out of my brush. It's not good, is it? Oh, let's put where I hit get into the blue. I kind of like this pink actually. There's actually trees right here, so I probably don't have to worry so much about that. Hope you can see this pink. It's actually pink. I hope you can see it. Pink, but very pale pink. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch it into some blue, and I hope this isn't too strong. I'm kind of going to touch it in a few spots and see what happens. Okay, it might be okay. i got to make it real light, though. As light as I can get it, just about. This is probably one of the lightest skies I've ever painted, really. No clouds. Just very pale. Pastel colors. Maybe that would maybe be a better way to put it. It's a pastel looking sky. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with soft colors. Let's see, a little blue down in here. Not everything has to be bright and vibrant. Sometimes soft colors look good. Stand back and take a look. Okay, I see a spot right here. Take a look. Like I said, there's trees on that side, so I'm not too worried about that. Maybe a little darker right here. Stand back and take a peek at it. All right, so what I'm doing here, I went ahead and just sketched out my barn so I wouldn't lose its shape where I put the sky in. I just put a few background trees in, so this is probably going to be covered up, some of this and this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and work on my grass. Um, when I look at the picture, I really can't tell where the sun is coming. I see no shadows. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a guessing game. So I'm going to say the sun is coming down this way today. They're just going to leave it up to us to decide, I think. This is Cad Yellow Light. And I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to rub in collars sporadic collars just here and there and I'm going to mix it all up a lot of you seen me do this before 
if you've seen my channel before. But this is how I did a lot of times because I want varied collars. This is pretty green right here. I want varied collars in my grass. I don't want solid green. I want random collars. And then I will take my one inch brush and mix everything up. Of course, when I do that, after I do that, eventually I'll go over it with the fan brush. But this is a nice looking barn. It's got a fence that comes up, big, nice, tall fence that comes around. Got a red tree in the picture. It's not a bad picture. I know I've done a barn. I'll probably, this will probably be coming out in probably a week or two from right now. So when you see it, um, it's probably it'll probably be about the fourth barn away from my last barn. If that makes any sense, it probably don't. <laughs> but anyways, it's it'll be coming out coming out soon. Uh, let me get a little Prussian blue. And this is really dark down in here. Actually, let me go up here and finish with my greens. This is dark right here. Dark right here. Dark down in here. I'm going to take a little alizarin crimson put down in here. Red's a foreground color. And I have some on my palette, so I might as well use it, right? I think I'm going to be able to make use of this. is some leftover mountain collar that I used a while ago. I think I'm going to be able to make use of it somewhere on the barn. That way you don't waste any paint. Let me get a one inch brush. Try to find the cleanest one I have. Which is hard to find at this time of day. But I think I got one. And I'm going to start here in the yellows. And I'm just going to smear all this in. I'm going to get right up to the line. Right up to the barn. And I'm going to get these lighter collars first. And then I'm going to get into the darker ones. But the lighter ones are first. See how it's making different colors? This is what you want. This makes you a real good base for when you go over it your final time. This is called putting color on the canvas, basically. And that's what we're doing. Putting color down on the canvas. Getting closer to the dark. I just touched a little red, I can tell. That's okay, but you don't want to start down here and work your way up. That'd be terrible. You don't want to do that. It's always dark in your corners, usually, and across the bottom. I mean, I could even take a towel if this is too thick wipe it off because my collar is down there. It's in the canvas now. Just get across the bottom. I may do that. I may take a towel and wipe it off. This is this is probably going to be hidden most of this according to the picture. Okay, let me do my barn and I'll be back. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm doing with the barn. I, this is just, I'm just putting color down here also. This barn's kind of bluish looking. And I'm just using some random, I'm using some of my mountain collar a little bit. Then I'm taking a little bit of white. Kind of making it a little bit more pale. And this is going to be our base we're going to work with. This is a number two brush I have. And that's that's really all I'm doing, just messing around here a little bit. I was going to go ahead and do the barn off camera, but I but I want to show you what I'm doing. Cause this kind of gets boring to watch. I don't want to 
make you sit there and watch this whole thing. But this is my mountain color I was using earlier. And then I'm taking a little white, making it more pale. See how that kind of blends it out a little bit. Making it pale. But this is just getting color on the canvas. This is all I'm doing. This is our, our base tone. Just our base. All right. I'll finish this up. I went ahead and I got my base collar in right here on my barn. I'm going to go ahead and start working on this grass. I'm going to use my fan brush. I'm going to do the grass before I put the fence in. It makes things a whole lot easier. I got a lot of collar left on my palette where I've been painting over the last day or two and I got to use it anyway. Quickly before it dries out on me. And this is a pretty good way to use it. I'm going to start, this is cad yellow light. I'm going to start right back in here. The sun, we determine, is going to be coming down this way. This is furthest away, which is going to be lighter. And I do, I do have a, I've probably told you this already, but I do have a picture that I'm looking at today. This, this barn, barn scene. It always helps to have a picture. I always have you something to look at, man. It's make your life so much easier. A lot of times I don't, and boy, I tell you, it's, it gets tough. And it gets tough because you keep wanting to do the same things over and over and over. You default back to what you remember and what you know, things of that nature. Not that it can't be done. I mean, I do it, and if I can do it, anybody else can do it. But it's always easier to have something to look at. It really is. We're going to switch to some ochre. I want these collars nice and mixed and varied. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Because our fence is going to come all the way across through here. It's going to come down here and go all the way across. So it's so this is definitely more it's definitely important to put the grass in first. That's without saying. Make it a little lighter right in there. Actually in a picture this is green, but I'm not gonna I don't follow exactly. Alright, let's start switching to some green now. Let's go ahead and start right in here. As we're getting closer, it's going to be getting darker. Something on my brush there. It's going to be getting darker as we get closer. That gives you the illusion of distance. The further something away is, the lighter it is, and as it gets, comes closer, it gets darker. That's the way everything is. Pretty much everything. And this is really going should be pretty dark over in this area. So I'm going to start making my way over in here. You can use a one inch brush if you want. You can, whatever is easiest for you, whatever you're used to, whatever you're used to, just use it. I got some red on my brush apparently from something. Oh, I probably stuck. I got red right beside my green. That wasn't smart, was it? That's okay though. Don't hurt a thing. Just more color variation, isn't it? I need to put some yellow back in here so I won't go that high because the sun is coming behind the barn. I'll have to probably switch brushes for that though. I've got this brush contaminated with dark colors now. And I'm going to go ahead and start grabbing, I'm going to grab a little Prussian blue. We're going to get real dark in here. There's actually a couple trees over in here. It needs to be dark anyway. Let me scoot, scoot this out a touch. Yeah, this is definitely... I got my picture up here above my head today. 
a lot of times I'll have it over there. And people are probably thinking, why does he keep looking over there? Well, that's why. <laughs> start down in here. Start trying to go a little faster so I don't bore you to death. But you can see your collars get darker as you come down. You can even put red in here. It's a foreground collar. I do it too. Put red in a lot of times. Red and blue makes purple, so it just makes it dark, and it's supposed to be dark anyways. And I'll go ahead and do that. I got some right here. See, that don't look too bad. Lizard and crimson is what I'm using. Nice and varied collars. Prussian blue. I'll go ahead. Okay, we're about done with this. We're going to move on to something else now. Just got to finish up here, put some yellow right there, and we're done. I've been working on my barn here a little bit. Uh, put me a tree uh, next to the barn here. And now I'm going to put a bigger tree right there. Try out my new filbert brush I got yesterday. And it's going to come down here, but it's pretty darn big. It probably starts right up in here. And we're going to run it all the way down to right in here. Yeah, I had to force myself to go to Hobby Lobby yesterday, man. I do not like going to the store. Especially after work. I just want to get home. <laughs> like everybody else. But you got to do what you got to do. This is just black and brown right here is what I'm using. Black and brown. Yeah, it's a pretty big tree right here. I had a, the picture that I'm using today shows a red tree in front of this. And I'm just not sure about that. I, I'm not sure how that's going to look on this painting. You know, you add things, you take things away. It's like this tree is not, not in the picture. But I think it needs something there. You know, you don't, you're not stuck. Just because you have something to look at don't mean you have to follow it to the T. And and I don't most of the time. I either want stuff that's not there or I don't like something that's in it. This is going to be a leaf tree. You won't even probably see these branches here. But I'm putting them, putting them in just in case. Got a little wider right there. Well, sure enough, if I don't, you'll see a blank spot somewhere. This tree don't really. I might have to switch brushes and get a smaller one. This tree does not really have. I think I'm going to. Don't have big branches. Has a lot of leaves, just not big branches. And I'm going to say that you don't see these because I'm pretty sure you won't be able to. So I'm just going to throw in some branches here and there on this tree. Just sporadically. Uh, let's see here. Probably one here. Probably won't see much of these either, I doubt. Leaves are pretty thick. But I'm going to put them in anyway. Just real quick. Just in case. Let's see. I might I might stop right there for the moment. Till I see how the leaves, till I make my mind up about the leaves. And it's got another tree right in here. And we might as well since we got this, since we're on a roll here. This one has real skinny leaves on it. I mean branches, excuse me. I was looking at the leaves. I'll probably have to get my liner brush out for this. They're so small. And some of these branches are actually going to be showing 
if I keep it this way because the tree looks half dead. I'm just kind of spinning my brush as I come up just so I can keep the paint flowing. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to break my liner brush out for this and something. This is a number one, I believe, brush, and I need something smaller than that. This painting's been sitting around a day or two. Not on purpose. I just have to work like everybody else. So it's dried a little bit on me right here. And that's okay. Keeps from making mud. I don't I don't worry about it because I'm used to it. I do it all the time. Sometimes on purpose. Just so I don't mix a bunch of mud up while I'm painting. Because oil paint's kind of finicky. If you keep painting oil over oil, man, you're going to have a mess like you wouldn't believe. Let's bring this one out a little more. Let's bring another one or two over in here. And then we'll probably start on our leaves and go ahead and knock that out. I'm saving the fence for last. I got a little fence right here, a big one running across the front. Uh, let's put one right there. Let's make a little bit more of this. Just some pieces coming in. Crossing each other. Maybe right here. It's, this area is going to have leaves. This up in here looks like it's kind of dead. Looking at the picture. Alright, I'm going to start working on my leaves. Get, at least get started on then I'll be back. Alright, I started on my mid-tone collar here. Which is more yellow than green, but it's yellow and green. This is just from my mid-tone collar. I, I might go up here and start on this tree so you don't have to watch me do every one of them. But I'm starting on the outside. And this is just a mid-tone collar. And I'm working my way in. Just kind of... Flipping the leaves here and there, and I'm wiping my brush off as I'm going along because I'm picking up a lot of black that's on the tree right there. I think it probably needs something right in here. Just a mid-tone. You need a minimum of three collars, a minimum, on everything, really. I mean, and that's a minimum. I just can't really get enough collar and some of different colors, variety. Let's see something here. I think I need to pull that together a little bit there. A little bit on that tree right there. Okay, let me wipe my brush off and I'll go ahead and do a highlight for you and that way you don't have to watch me do all this. I'm trying to conserve your time. <laughs> If you know what I mean. Time is valuable. So I'm going to take pure cad yellow light. And if you, you've probably seen me do this before if you've seen my videos. And I'm going to start on the outside and I'm going to work my way in. And this is going to give us our highlights. This is a very bright color. The sun is coming down this way. And this is why we're starting right here. And we're going to work our way in. Just mixing it up as we go. It's going to mix on its own anyway as soon as you touch it. Wipe your brush off. Get you some more. Put, put a pretty good amount on here. We're going to start up here. And you don't have to hold your brush like I'm doing. It's just how I'm doing it at the moment. I change. There's no certain way I do anything like that. I just, whatever's convenient at the moment. Uh, let's, let's say that this one's sticking out a little bit here. Sun's catching this a little bit. 
right in there. It's probably catching some of this too. You know, it's your tree. You can do whatever you want with it. We'll just say the sun's hitting this spot right here too. And it's going to catch a few more spots here and there. You know how the sun is. If it can get through, it's going to get through. And I still got to do this one. I think the sun's probably hitting this right here. Not a lot, but it is. Probably catching a little bit in here. Just keep loading your brush. Load it pretty heavy. Let's go ahead and hit this. We know the sun's hitting this part. We know that for a fact. And let's just keep going right here. I think the sun's probably sneaking in right in here. On this one. Stand back, take a peek. Let's rub some of this just brightness up a little bit in here and here uh, maybe there just gotta be careful you don't want to overdo stuff mm, let's see maybe there at this point when I'm touching down here I'm mainly just mixing color so it's not going to be real vibrant and that's okay. And of course, we still got to highlight the tree, but I just want to show you the leaf part. I'm going to go ahead and put a fence in here. I put some creepy crawly vines back here on this barn. I'm gonna, I think I might put some red flowers on them or something. But I'm going to put my close up fence in right here. And I believe I'm looking at my picture here. I got one fence way or one post way over here. This is a big fence here. Comes almost all the way down. And then I got another one probably here that don't go as far down. And one probably here that don't go as far down and probably one right probably right here Now in the picture that I'm looking at, this is another thing I'm going to change. This fence post, I mean, it looks brand new. Well, we don't want that. I mean, this is a rustic looking painting. We don't, we don't want something to look brand new. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to grab a different brush. This is a number four round brush. And I'm going to make... I'm just going to make my own posts. I want them kind of gnarly looking, man. I, I like rustic looking things. I don't want I don't want something looking new. If I want something looking new, I'll go to Lowe's and get it. I want old stuff. For those of you who don't know, Lowe's is a hardware store. Some people may I say that and some people are like, what? It's where you buy fence posts and stuff. But I want this thing to look rough, you know, rough as I can. I don't want to look crazy, but I just don't want it to look new. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Let's put one right here. Put one right there. Make it a little wider right here. And 
this one is on the ground. This one has fallen. Laying on the ground, not attached. And this one is attached. And so is this one. So you just change things as you go along. You have to adapt with your painting. You know, you can't be strict with yourself. You have to adapt. If you need to fix something, fix it. If you need to change it, change it. As you're working through your painting. Uh, let's put one right here. Another one here. Okay. Now, let me get me a highlight brush. Let's throw a few highlights on this fence. Yeah, I think I'm going to put some vines on this fence too. I think that would look good. I'm actually going to use this white and pink that I had for the sky and I used on the tree. It, it looks almost white, but yet it's not, so that's good. Sun's coming down this way, so let's start right here. I'm just going to run a line of this down here. Get me a paper towel in hand here because you need your paper towels. And we'll get another load. I'm just going to keep doing this. And I'm twisting my brush as I'm coming down to keep fresh paint on here. Cause see how black that brush is now? It's picking up the paint from underneath. That's why you always got to twist your brush. And just keep doing this. I'll obviously put a lot more collars in here, but this is my this is my starting color. We'll go we'll graze some across the top of this. Top of the fence here. Post. No, this ain't the post, the rail. To keep wiping it off because this is real wet and I'm picking up a lot. A lot of black. See it doesn't take too long. You just take your time and get it the way you want it. Especially, you know, when you're working at home just as a hobby or whatever whatever you may be painting for, whatever reason. You just like it. Yeah, I bought them brushes at Hobby Lobby yesterday. I, I don't buy nothing there, man, unless it's 50% off. That place is so high. Way overpriced. I mean, I think. Everybody's got their own opinion. That's my opinion on that one. I'm just going to keep doing this until we get it the way we want it. I'm probably going to put yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Something, almost the same colors as I put on this tree, but I may make it, since this fence is closer, I'll have to be you know, a little more careful with what I'm using and how it looks, because this is kind of in your face right here. <laughs> this is close up, man. It's about as close as it gets right here. I got a big gob of paint on here, and that's okay. Yeah, this pink and white came in real handy. That's why I don't throw my paint away. I mean, I just, if I have extra, I'll keep it and try to use it in something. This is perfect. Absolutely perfect to use. Let me get a little ochre, a little burnt sienna. Let's start putting a little something in here. I'm just, it's pretty wet. But this, but you have to start somewhere. Yellow ochre, ochre, burnt sienna. I 
I'll have to lighten this up. See, that's why it's good sometimes just to let your painting sit and dry for a day. I do that a lot because of work. So in the evenings I come in after work, you know, because I can't paint at work, and um, I'll work on it about an hour an evening. Because, you see, these posts are so wet. Now, if I let this sit till tomorrow, man, this color would just shine. I mean, it wouldn't blend. You wouldn't have a problem with it. But it's pretty wet, so it's kind of dark looking. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the fence post. I'm going to put Prussian blue on the back side. And then we'll come back and we'll do some touching up. All right, I went ahead and I put a few little red flowers on this. I don't know if you can see that or not. And now on this fence post, I'm going to take some black and some green. And remember, this is still pretty wet. I just did this a few minutes ago. But we're going we're gonna to give it our best shot here. Black and green. It's okay to cover your fence post up because we got a purpose. We're doing this for a reason right here. I want to put some flowers on this. Don't want to overdo, but I do want a pretty good amount. Maybe some purple, blue, something like that. Let's just run it on down here, all the way to the ground. We'll try bluish purple if we don't like it, and then we'll change it. You can change it. All right, I'm back. I had to take some shop towels and put on here, and one of the reasons was the brush I had I was putting green on had black in it. And as I was putting it on, I couldn't, I was thinking, Why is, what's causing it? I had to just basically start over. I had to get rid of some of that stuff. So I'm going to highlight it. Now, now we're ready. I'm going to take some of this yellow. And I'm just going to highlight it here and there. I'm just, I'm just kind of touching it. Because it's still wet. So we don't want to overdo. Got to be careful. Let's get a tear off the paper towel here. And then we're going to try to do our flowers on it. I got my palette sitting down here. And we're just going to hit and miss with our yellow. You know, it's foliage, it's got yellow in it. And we're just going to come down. I think the sun's hitting right in here. Maybe a touch down here, maybe. But it don't hurt to put that down there a little bit. And let's work right here. A little bit right here. Now here comes the part I'm not sure about. <laughs> let's see how these flowers are going to look. I'm not sure. Red would probably be fine, but I've got red there. I may, let me try one. I'm going to try one. If I don't like it, we're not going to do it. This is a pretty dark bluish, bluish purple. Let me, let me try one right here where it's not too obvious. This is how you do. You got to, sometimes you just got to experiment. It may not show up at all. It's pretty dark. Let me take some of this. See, I got this sky color right here. Let me mix some of this in. I'm just rolling my brush in, and I want to get plenty of it on here. And that kind of shows up, but not real well. Let me try it one more time. If I don't work, we're going with red. 
so you guys get to see me experimenting here. Uh, I don't like it. Red it is. Red it is, my friends. Let me get some. All right, I've got some red. I'm going to set my palette down. And I'm going to start out with the lizard and crimson. It's a darker red, really dark. I'm going to start out with that. And I'm going to, I actually got one started there. Let's try another one. And then I'm going to put bright, real bright red on it. These are going to be pretty big flowers. I want them to stand out. Let's try one right here. I want them to really stand out. I'm not the best flower maker in the world. But, you know, you can, as long as you know what they are, if you looked at it and said, what the heck is that? That'd be bad. I mean, what's that guy doing? <laughs> this guy's lost his mind. He's putting something on there. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, that'd be bad. Let's try one right here. Yeah, this paint is so wet. Yeah, that's why I'm not swiping it on there because I don't think it'd stick. Now I could thin my paint down. I mean, there's ways to get around it. I just, I just don't want to. <laughs> if I don't have to, I mean. Why do something you don't have to do, right? Uh, let's see here. There's several on there. And let's see what we can do this real bright color. This is Cad Red Light. These are probably going to pretty much remain dark right there. But this one will show. Okay, that's showing up a little bit. Ooh, I got a real big chunk here. I'll get that off there. I'm putting a pretty good amount on here. Okay. So far, I think so good. I'm just pressing on, that's all I'm doing. I mean, I could take a little bit of white also, and, and I may, just to give it a little pop. Let's put some right here on this. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and hit this too, just so I don't think I'm being mean to it. Make it feel jealous, left out. Don't want that. Let's see. Let me go ahead and put one or two just by themselves. Let's see how this looks. Let's just do space them out a little bit. Well, looks like we're finished. I think it turned out pretty well. I like it. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future videos. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.